In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Hyperfuse Photoshop action. And what we're going to be doing is turning this photo here uh, into this design with just a few steps. So from that to that. Okay, so I have my photo open here. And just make sure that when you open up your photo that uh, your layer is set as the background. It should look like this. If it doesn't, you open it up and it's called something else. You don't have that lock symbol there. Just go to Layer, New background from layer, we'll set it as a background. Okay, next just make sure that you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel. And you also want to make sure that you work with a, a nice high resolution photo to get the most out of this action. Um, try and avoid using anything under a thousand pixels because you might run into um, some errors with the action if you do that. Okay, so Next, go into your layer panel, go to this top right hand corner icon and just make sure, go to your panel options, just check to add copy to copied layers and groups is selected, um, click OK. Now another thing to keep in mind, if, you're, if your subject is a person um, and say how his hand is cropped off here or close to the edge of their artboard and his feet here, now the effects of this action they sort of explode out everywhere. So I want, there, I want to have a bit of room around his hand and down below his feet. So I'm just going to extend um, this canvas size. Just going to knock that up 500 pixels, just like that. Um, so just you can, you don't have to do that, but just keep in mind um, your subject and if you want sort of you know those effects to uh, be visible at the sides. All right. So all you got to do to get this action to work is create a new layer call it brush, it all uh, it needs to be lowercase, uh, click OK, now you want to hit B on the keyboard, grab yourself a brush, make sure you're using a soft brush, um, and select a colour, doesn't matter what colour you pick, and you want to brush over where you want uh, the effect to appear, okay, so go ahead and do that, I won't bore you with um, watching me brush this, so I'll just open up one that I uh, brushed earlier, zoom in here, okay so all I've done is, yeah you can see that, brushed over my subject, so with that done uh, we want to load up our actions panel, so to get this panel to come up you go to window actions, it'll appear here, go to this top right hand corner icon and go to load actions and select the hyperfuse.atn file and it appears here. Now when you've brushed over your photo that's all you need to do, okay? So you just select the Hyperfuse uh, action and you click play. Now this one takes quite a while to complete, somewhere around a minute and a half to two minutes. Uh, it has to go through a ton of steps, build up a lot of layers to um, build this look. So just come back to hit play and come back to Photoshop in you know a minute and a half, two minutes time and uh, see what you got. All right, so I'll fast forward the video and get to the result of this one and we'll go from there. Alright, so the action stopped and this is the default look that we get. Okay, so let's go into the layer panel now and talk about how we can customize uh, this design. Alright, so at the top here we have our uh, initial area that we brushed. Uh, so you can see that a lot of the effects grow out from where you brush, so just keep that in mind. Um, I've left this layer on, it's a before and after look. Um, just so you can tick that on and off as you're working away to refer back to the original. Um, this is just a, an adjustment layer that you can use to adjust the overall saturation of your design. You can also use this drop down menu and target different colour groups. So I can grab the magentas and slide that around, get different colours. Okay, this layer down, add vibrance. If I turn this one on and off, you can see the effect there. You can either double click on this and adjust this handle here um, or you can just adjust the opacity of that adjustment layer. Add contrast. By default this is set to 20%. Uh, if you just click and drag the word opacity left and right you can see uh, it adjusts the contrast there. Just like that. Add sharpening. This just adds a little bit of overall sharpening to your photo. Uh, if you want to do that after you've messed around with playing with these layers, then best to turn that one off and sharpen your image after uh, you're finished. Okay, so we have our Hyperfuse folder here. This has all the parts inside. I'll just minimize these folders. 
and we'll go down and talk about which uh, what each folder does. All right, so this top one here, wavy lines. If I turn this one on and off, you can see uh, what they are. And if you go inside here, uh, just minimize these folders again. We have uh, all the lines and separate layers, which we can freely just move around. We can even duplicate it, you know, rotate it, flip it vertically. Now you can keep building more and more lines to make it as detailed as you want. And this blue layer here, uh, randomized lines color, if we double click on this one, um, just use a hue slider, you can actually color or recolor those elements. So let's go with this cyan. Okay, now if you, say for example, you don't want this, uh, this group of lines here, then what you can do that on the wavy lines folder is a mask. Okay, so if you grab yourself a brush, a black brush, uh, you can just brush onto that mask and hide areas that you don't want, like that. Okay, so if I don't want um, this bit here, oops, sorry, this bar here, you can just erase that. All right, and you can just to bring it back, you just switch to white and you can brush back in. Okay. So photo overlay lines, these lines sit resting on top of your photo. So if I turn our photo layer off, you can see uh, what they do. Okay, so we'll go inside here and you know you can move all these around. Once again, you can duplicate them. If it's too much, you can just turn a group off. You know, you can turn them on one by one as you're going up to see how it affects it. And the same deal again. Uh, if it's too heavy in some areas, just select the mask, black brush, and looks a bit heavier on his arms here, so I'll just hide it. Okay. This layer down, light effects. Now, by default, I've uh, hidden all the effects with a mask. Okay, because generally, but with the default look, it's a bit too heavy, and I prefer that you brush on where you want uh, the light effects to appear. So, if you want to get an overall preview of um, where they will appear. If I hold down shift on the keyboard and click on this mask, what it will do, it will reveal all the light all the um, light effects. So then you get an overall look of you know where you could brush onto this photo to reveal some of these effects. So it's it's too heavy around his face and down here on his chest, but like kind of like these little streaks up the top here and down by his feet. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just click back on that to um, release it the mask and I'll grab a white brush so I can uh, brush in what details I want. Okay, so a bit up here on his hands uh, and down around his feet. See, remember if I brush into his chest I said it was too heavy so that's a bit too much. So that's just a good one to um, just to check uh, after the action is complete because on some photos it looks you know you get some really wicked results that you can brush on. And again, you can go inside this layer and um, duplicate them. Whoops. You, know, you can duplicate them over and over, keep stacking and building the effect. Alright, so the layer down here is dots. If I turn this one on and off, you can see uh, this explosion of colour. And all these colours come from your photo. Okay, so whatever colour your subject is, that'll be the colour of the dots. Alright, so again, you've got a mask here. You say, I don't want dots uh, over his face. Actually, we'll just erase it from his body. Um, grab a black brush. And I can start brushing away those dots. Just like that. Again, if you go inside this folder, uh, we have all the dots on separate layers. So I can just duplicate this, move it, duplicate it again. You can create many dots as you want okay and you've got this layer here change dots color if you double click on this you can just again use this slider handle and to recolor the dots Let's go something like that alright so the layer below is the one I really want you to um, get creative with I've highlighted it uh, in yellow as one you know 
to get your attention with. So what I want you to do, um, I've called it reveal your photo. And I want you to work with this mask here. So at the moment, you know, the whole photo is revealed. This is the area that we cut out. Okay, let's see where you brushed. Uh, so we have it here on a layer. So what you can do is, if you select the the, uh, the mask and grab a black brush, you can erase um, part of the photo, but it will it'll keep that really cool detail from the um, folders above. So like, look what happens when I brush over his feet. Okay, and up through here. Okay, and if I brush these dots back on, I can brush back onto to his body like this. So you can get really creative with using these masks to um, to build these looks. All right, so we'll just. Alright, let's just erase a bit of this. Alrighty, uh, the layer below, add glow. That one just adds a bit of glow around the edges of where we initially brushed. Uh, if you want it to sit on top of your entire photo, what you could do is hold down shift and hide this mask. And you could probably bring this up the top here. So it sits on top of your photo. Uh, and you can release the mask and brush on, um, grab a white brush, so you can sort of brush onto areas, add a bit of glow, uh, you can change the blend mode if you want, something is a bit stronger, uh, lower the opacity, anyway that's one to mess around with, alright, so put it back down here, okay, folder below, abstract base, if I turn this folder on and off, you can see that it just adds a little bit of randomized detail around the edges of where we brush so you can see that there but the way I like to use this folder is if you go inside um, you got the abstract base photo here right and it's got this mask so this mask here if I just alt click to go inside this mask the white area is where it's restricted to so that's where it will appear um, if I go back into here so if I turn this folder on and off again so you can see it was just appearing in that white area inside a mask so what you can do is, if I brush white to add, oops, sorry, uh, to brush onto our photo, you can see that it brings in some of that detail, like that. And what you can do then is select your reveal your photo layer, and if you erase, so brush black, you can erase some of that of the original photo but it will blend down onto this base photo okay so that technique you should really experiment with a lot with this action because I've come up with some really cool results just going back and forth between brushing um, these layers alrighty now this layer here abstract wavy lines overlay turn it, that one on and off you can see that that adds just a little bit of oops, that adds a little bit of randomized detail. If I move that one out to the side, you can see what that's doing. Okay. Now, the, f the layer below, background color, pretty self-explanatory. You double click on this, uh, you can select a new color. So I think in that image before, we use like a light, something like this. And what I did is I went, I double clicked on this layer I went to gradient overlay, set this to radial, set the blend mode, oh sorry, flip that to reverse, uh, flip the blend mode to screen, and I'll just lower the opacity a bit, just like that. Okay, so I might work on just, I might just adjust this area. So you can see if I turn off the abstract base um, folder, uh, it just reveals where we've brushed, um, where we've kept our original photo. So you can see that there. So anywhere that hasn't been brushed here will fall down onto this abstract base folder and fill it in here. 
And one thing I forgot to mention is inside this folder, um, there's a layer called Change Color. We can just double click on this and again just use this handle and you can get some really cool uh, sort of abstract looking results. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you use the Hyperfuse Photoshop action. Really simple, really fun. You can come up with really cool results um, and only takes you know, a couple minutes. Okay? Uh, have fun. If you've got any questions, just contact me and I'll help you out. Thanks.